Hello, welcome to the series One Year with the Ramhal. And uh, the weekly portion of Noah, uh, we're going to cover according to the ideas of the Ramhal. So let's see. Um, and uh, the weekly portion, I told you this is Noah, one who looks into the rainbow according to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, it is like as referring to the exile. So looking into the rainbow is seen as offense to the divine, the creator. Why does it refer to exile at all? After the flood, the creator promised not to bring any destruction like the flood to the third. So the rainbow, it is serving as a sign of this covenant. The people of Noah, this generation, had sinned, causing their own destruction energetically. So the divine presence, the Shechina, did not repeal the evil, but save the good of the generation, which was Noah and his family. So the ark that was protecting Noah is representing the Shechina itself. Hashem promised that evil would never grow to the extent of causing another flood, but exile was not excluded. So it is a sign we have evil around us and everyone needs to work on suppressing it. So how do you uh, act? Be proactive and engage in good deeds. These actions can be the means to help the days of exile come to an end. And Hashem promised pertain to the physical level, no flood at all. But what about the spiritual levels? The rainbow is like the ark on the spiritual level, as it is stated in Yehezkiah. So the spiritual equivalent of the ark is the rainbow. Kemare hakeshet asher yeh ba'anan beyom hageshem ken mara hanoga savivhu mare dmut kevot Hashem ve'are ve'afol al pnei ve'ishma kol midbar. As the appearance of the bow that is the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness uh, round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard a voice of one that spoke. So this prophecy came during the period when Jews were already in exile, reflecting the current situation that accompanied them during uh, their time. According to the prophet Yehezkiel, the rainbow served as a protection for the Jews during their exile in Babylon. It shielded them against the spread of the evil forces. So the cautionary aspect of not looking into the rainbow is a manifestation of the potential spread of evil. Even though Jews must be protected, our current level of spirituality and consciousness is not as elevated as it is during the time of the temple. So we need to be more vigilant against the emergence of the evil. The rainbow was our protection, but looking into uh, the could pose a danger causing uncertainty and potentially allowing the return of the evil. Our conscious thinking and spiritual level are not as high as they were during the time of Temple, as I mentioned. Therefore, we must be more cautious and circumspect in the face of malevolent forces. And then it continues. And it came to pass the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he made. So after the 40 days, on the top of the mountains, Noah looked out of the world as the water level was so high that covered everything. He opened the little window and sent out the raven. Now, uh, for him, it was clear that he wouldn't check who could go out. He sent out the raven whose root uh, arose and the the like erev like evening the bird's black feathers represent the energy of severity judgment the, and the gura uh, hence he find the next verse and he sent out the raven okay now felt that the judgment had been removed from earth and the kindness of the divine the chesed could return so there was no place for the raven the judgment weakened, but it had not completely disappeared. So water covered or still some uh, land. The energy of the raven is connected to the negativity. 
with the root of Orev, we mentioned Erev. And also, if you rearrange it, we can have Bera'a. It is meaning the evil. Yeah. And um, when we're writing with the Vav, mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, uh, bera'a, uh, it's meaning bet resh ayin, and if we implement uh, vav, that ra bo evil within it. So now effort was to rid himself uh, of the judgment and the evil represented by the raven, the orev, and what is represented by ra bo. However, right. After releasing the raven, it kept coming back because there was no place to, for it to land as the water still covered everything. This too, it is a metaphor for how challenging it is to get rid of, of some evil in our life because we need some consistent effort uh, to, to get rid of it. Think of it like uh, overcoming a bad habit. How many times we need to overcome ourselves to succeed? After this now sent out the dove, and he sent forth a dove for him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. He refined that Noah did not want to release the dove yet because the dove itself symbolizing the goodness as he knew that there was still some negative energy outside. So there was water indicating judgment. Therefore, it is written And he sent forth the dove from him to see if the waters were abated from of the face of the ground. <coughs> the first ten generations from Adam are shown to Noah. They uh, were not meat eaters. They didn't uh, consume meat because it is filled with animal energies and instincts that support those. And the 10th generation didn't in incline in that direction. If they had eaten meat, their spiritual level would have deteriorated much earlier than in uh, than, uh, the time of Noah. The spiritual level of people could have degraded to the extent that they would have needed to be wiped off the face of the earth. So Noah family, however, was some different. So their spiritual level was above average, and eating meat did not cause a change in their spiritual state. They need not become nefesh, okay, that uh, is represented by the uh, meat uh, uh, eaters. They so the soul remained less instinctive. So why? Noah had the ability to, to transform the high, the living, into Medaber, speaking, elevating it to a human level. While consuming food, he not only processed it physically, but also raised the consumed food to a spiritually higher level. Uh, so in the food chain, like each member aspires to elevate itself to a higher level. As the bottom that we start in an inanimate entities providing sustenance to the plant world. The plant world provides nourishment for the animal kingdom, and the animal kingdom in turn provides sustenance to humans, to the metabem. So this we have these stages. Thus, every component in the chain had ascended to a higher level on the scale of creation. Kol remesh asher hu chai lekol yeh lehachala, kayere kesev natati lechem et kol. Uh, every moving thing that lives shall be for uh, food for you as the green herb I, I have given to you all. After these 10 generations, everyone was allowed to eat meat. So Noah and his family uh, were special, so why could they eat uh, this meat? Noah was a tzaddik, a righteous, in his generation, a complete and wall in his soul. Uh, allegedly born circumcised, there was no need for the Brit Mila for him. He was already perfect. So from the moment of his birth, he could distinguish between good and evil. Why did his soul need a consumption of meat, right? After the flood, only Noah and his family remained. So Noah and his sons 
Shem, Ham, and Yefet had to populate the whole earth from the beginning. So every nation is or originate uh, from uh, Noah. Uh, and each nation requires different energies. Some nations are characterized by the inner world, while others are, are like external actions. Since Noah and his family had to represent all nations, all kind, including not just one expect their example and compass to everyone. And uh, lastly, And surely your blood of life will I require, at the hand of every beast will I require it. At the, uh, and at the hand of man, even at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. So this uh, pasuk signifies the prohibition against suicide. Humans are granted the ability to slaughter animals for the purpose of consumption. According to the development uh, theory uh, previously mentioned, that the high, the living, wants to be part of the metaber, go, go uh, want to elevate uh, itself, the human by offering itself. However, this doesn't mean that a person has the right to take their own life. We don't have such authority over our own bodies, let alone the lives of others. The soul uh, has a purpose as long as divine wills it. Uh, those who violate this, take their own life, are akin to participating in the murder of others. So the punishment for such as an act is the same. The human soul created in the image of the divine, Tzelem Elohim, is a cherished creation of the creator. An animal that kills a human must also face consequences because it failed to respect the divine system and the functioning of the world. In truth, the animal's owner did not teach the animal properly, leading to aggressive behavior and resulting in human victim. So the goal of the animal kingdom is to serve humanity. If an animal kills a human, despite its lack of conscious behavior and relying only on instincts, it must be held accountable for its action as it is violated the divine system. Okay, so basically what we learn, no one can violate the divine system. That was for this uh, week, and see you uh, next time for the next weekly portion with the Ramhal. Thank you. Bye-bye.